<sighs> well, there we go, folks. About the deed has been done. In 14 days, I'll have one last job. Oh! Hello, everyone. Welcome back. For I'm the one, the only Hobo Tom. And if you accidentally heard that, yeah, I handed in my notice. I'm going to be done there really soon. So, I'll probably be a lot more relaxed feeling, be more tranquilo, and I'll be a little bit richer, actually. That's a whole other issue. I'm not here to talk about my stuff. I'm here to talk about some Impact Wrestling. Yes, it's one of those rare nights. I've actually watched a lot of wrestling in the middle of this week. I have not seen any WWE stuff. Probably won't, because by the time this video gets up, it'll be a whole other time. But yeah. So let's get into it. Wait, before I get into Impact Wrestling, I have some thank yous to give out. Hot Juicy Burger. You, sir. Thank you very much. I've honestly... What did you say to me on Discord? Had to be something... I forget what it was now. You were talking about something. I posted something. You put you you sent me a message. I forget, sir, but since your name is Hot Juicy Burger, you get to see the hot juicy ass of one Jordan Grace. Oh my god, Becky, look at her butt. Ah! I like big butts and I cannot lie. Oh, did I actually say that? Man, I've been bad this Lent. Caught myself, I had meat twice. When I gave up meat, supposedly for Lent. I've been really good, though. Not one ounce of alcohol has hit my system. So that's <clears throat> that's probably the more important thing. Meow, meow, fuzz. You, sir, just know that Natalia is superior. Be very careful, Meow Meow Fuzz. I have no idea how I'd make you in the Daytona Beach Bomb Fight Week. But yep, now it's time for Impact Wrestling. And it starts off with a Josh Alexander promo. Moose shows up. He's Moose. And Moose went to Josh Alexander's house. That is obviously not in Moose Nation. But yeah, whole brawl ensues. See what you're thinking. Oh, that will also be my first pay-per-view live stream. April 23rd, I think it is. After Lent, I think. Oh, yeah, I'm going to have my nice, probably way too hard-stopping beef brisket and bacon and cheddar sandwich. With onion rings on it. Oh, I got to add that to my grocery list. Onion rings. You can't have a steakhouse sandwich without fried onion rings on it. Yeah, so um, after that, the show starts off the first match. Willie Mack versus Laredo Kid versus Speedball Mike Bailey. Man, Willie Mack's good for a big, fat guy. I said that in all possible nice terms. He can fly. He can just flip, do a stand. If I ever try to do a standing moon until I break my neck easily, um, no insults to Big E. It's a whole other issue. But yeah. Oh, Big E, glad to hear you're doing well. Hope everything goes as smooth as possible. Uh, he comes back in the ring, big leg drop, and he starts chopping both Laredo Kid and Mike Bailey. Laredo Kid might be, might be my Colt Cabana of Impact Wrestling. Whereas you always want to see him win, especially nothing matches, but yeah, he never wins the big one. Uh, let's see here then, Laredo Kid. He can fly too, though. I don't know how many rotations he did. He did some, like, twisting thing, flying over the top rope, then a twisting suplex, followed up by a frog splash. Twisting suplex on one, frog splash on the other. William Mack had a big, like, near pop-up smone drop. Of course, hey, yo. He did the razor's edge. Again, all the love going out to 
to raise your mom's family. Um, Scott Hall, past couple past few weeks. Um, Bailey really didn't do much, but take a lot of offense. Yeah, he gave some kicks. He did that. Aw- <laughs> he did that awful like Naomi like weird kick thing, and you know like there's absolutely no power behind those kicks. It's one Willie Mack just like literally has his arms up, arms by his side taking them. And they just don't look like they do anything besides, like, annoy you. Some did that to me. I'd probably just kick him in the balls or something. But yeah. Oh, you could do that in a triple threat match, too, by the way. No discue, folks. So, yeah. Um, Mike Bailey eventually hit the 360 knee drop from, I think, the second rope. That's also impressive. To get that many rotations from just the second rope and then just drop both knees. <laughs> Knees are hard. There's a reason why Muay Thai fighters and MMA fighters love to use knees. Because it's hard. I think someone said it's like the second hardest part of your body besides your, your head. Your knees and like elbows. Brutalize people. So yeah, Speedball Mike Bailey wins. He's going to mean the triple threat for Ultimo X. Again, I'll be hosting that show. So I have to, I have to get that stuff together. Eventually again. But this match was fun. Impact is so middle of the road. With the exception of one match, it's the main event. And it was just not what it should have been. I'll get to that later, though. Well, it was and it wasn't. I'll get to that later, though. This match itself, though, solid cheeseburger match. Of course, we had. I don't want to play the music because I, I want to get rid of this copyright strike. So the Bullet Club. So, once you're Bullet Club, you're Bullet Club for life. So, they cut a promo. That's pretty good. Uh, Steve Macklin versus Heath. Uh, my server cut out, so I think Steve Macklin won. Uh, Steve, he has the strikes. Heath, he used the inverted atomic drop as a counter. You get back to those old school 80s and 90s moves. I am all there. I want to see someone do a super atomic drop. That would be cool. Uh, eventually, Steve pulled in at Eddie because Rhino was at ringside. So Steve Macklin threw himself into the ring step. Rhino got tossed. As Steve Macklin had a big smile on his face. He had a big backbreaker, and I have no idea what happened. I think Steve Macklin won. Um, if you're out there in the U- in YouTube land, no, just say a comment. Say, say Hobo Tom knows absolutely nothing and should be watching this on pay TV, not his illegal pirate stream show that he watches somehow. He's going to go to hell. The FBI are going to show up at my house. Now, listen, the FBI would show up at my house for the day that I decided to mail some booze to a friend. That's a whole other issue. No, that's not even the, that's not even the FBI. That's the ATF. But yeah, that's a whole other issue. That's a whole other issue, though. So yeah. Um, this match was good. I can't complain about it. Cheeseburger match. Then we had the Jonah promo. It was okay. He's going to be fighting Tomoharu Ishii. Good luck, Jonah. Yeah, he is nothing like PFC or P- PCO, whatever his like fake Canadian name is. Evil Canadian. Let's call him the Mountie. Mountie number two, whatever. Um, then the next match, we have the Good Brothers. They're too good. For life. They're not just too good. They're too sweet. <sighs> Taking on VBD in a lumberjack match. This is actually good because the lumberjacks actually didn't fight amongst themselves. Bravo. They did what lumberjacks did. were supposed to do. They threw everyone back in the ring who came out. Normally in the WWE it's just a big mess outside. I think they had, like, faces next to heels. This was a true lumberjack match. Impact did a gimmick match right. 
Wow. Um, it was big versus big with Joe Doring and, and Doc Gallows. They start to trade punches eventually. All four end up in the ring. And then Eric Young. Woo! He pulled a Ric Flair over the top ropes. Carl Anderson still has one of the prettiest, smoothest spine busters ever, though. Uh, uh, Joe Doring's just too big for for Carl Anderson. The Good Brothers hit a double neck breaker. However, there was a nut shot by Matt Tavera of the Kingdom. Oh, up where no forearm, elbow, or fist should ever go on a man. So, Violent by Design 1. I can dig it. Again, they did this match right. Cheeseburger match. Yeah, this like whole house is way too echoey. Let's see here. Ooh, I'm going to get this done soon. Then we had Eddie Edwards. I think actually before this. Oh. Oh, no, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's later. We had Eddie Edwards versus Rocky Romero. This was pretty good. There was no handshake to start off the match. They said these two met in pro wrestling Noah, I think. Who knows? All these wrestlers, they always face each other all the time. There was uh, no handshake, which is chest slap, which leads to a leg kick. Uh, Eddie Edwards just kind of shoves Romero. Romero leg kicks him in exchange. Again, Rocky Romero, very, very Jap Japanese style. Um, a lot of leg kicks, very Muay Thai, um, judo stuff. Again, he had he hit uh, Rocky Romero had quick judo chest. Again, you're gonna pull off those judo moves in a real wrestling ring, a legit ippon. I mean, I'll always cheer that. Uh, then again, Rocky Romero the arm throw into the Jujigatami. You know how to set that up. Eddie Edwards sends Rocky into something on the out outside. Uh, Romero. He got bad control, had a tornado DT. However, again, the one weakness of the Juju Katami, if you can get stacked, especially in a wrestling ring, the way Eddie Edwards countered the Juju Katami with a stacked pin, Eddie Edwards won, and then he just started to beat up Rocky Romero because he faked him out on the handshake, beat him up a little bit, and then, I'm like, wait a second. Uh, Gershom, uh, Jonathan Gershom comes out. Does, doesn't he work for Tony Khan now over there in Ring of Honor? Who knows? He shook hands with Rocky Romero. Solid match. Yeah, you do judo stuff, you'll always, you'll always see my face light up. You know what? That's a cheeseburger match. I just had to do something while that cheeseburger picture was up. And then we came to kind of the down point. Um, we had a Philadelphia street fight. Now, mind you, this took place in the bingo hall known as the ECW Arena. I've been there once. It's a bingo hall. It's a really cruddy bingo hall. Even though I've only been to two bingo halls. And that was one of them. One was a date. I think I won money that day. But yeah, um, that was a long time ago too. Um, I don't know if the floors are as sticky as they used to be. Because again, ECW Arena was not known for its great views. Unless you were kind of up in like the standing section. I think sometimes in like the very back they had bleachers. Like, the cheap folding. I don't even know what the folding was. They were, like, the rollout and, and set set down. Bleachers, like, but they were all the way in the back. Sometimes the safest spot. Sometimes, this is ECW. Sometimes not the safest spot. I think when I was there, I just wanted to get in. I'm trying to think where I sat. I think it was just on the floor. It wasn't front row tickets. Those were all always taken up. Maybe 10 rows deep. That sounds about right. Not in the very back. 
just enough. As long as people don't stand up, it's actually pretty decent to see. Um, yeah, 10 rows away from ringside in ECW is not bad. And that's really not considered. I think the, they consider the first five ringside. Again, they didn't, didn't really go that deep, though. But yeah. Um, so I was expecting like like there to be blood. I expected a mess. I expected color. I expected some juicing, juicing and, and maybe, some, maybe all of it the hard way. Yeah, so this was a Philadelphia street fight. The famous ECW arena. The one thing a Philadelphia street fight needs is a cheese grater. There was no cheese grater. I was kind of disappointed. Um, we didn't have a trash can though, because Sasha Steele's ringside, she's posing. <laughs> Mickey James, who looks absolutely gorgeous and amazing. She's how things don't fall out in that amazing outfit of hers. How you don't see more of, of all of Mickey James' womanness is amazing some days. Yeah, um, yeah, she went spread eagle a couple times too. Eventually, we'll see some of the real goodies. But yeah, um, she just threw a trash can lid and like, ah, sorry already. And then she stuffed poor Tasha Seals who's a lot taller than that trash can into said trash can and barely rolled her down like the ramp area. That was not good. Yeah, it was like the first five rows, like the first, I think, five seats along the ramp were like premium tickets. I was like 10 rows deep, so I didn't care. And you still see everything. Again, sometimes... Harkening back to ECW shows, sometimes you don't want to be in those first few rows. You don't know what bodily fluids are coming at you at any time. And who knows what's in that those bodily fluids. Especially nowadays, knowing what we know about Hep C. Right, Abdullah? But yeah. Um, you know, I was looking for the cheese creator. There always has to be a cheese creator and a keyboard. A toaster oven, that would be pretty neat too, but uh, Mickey. Oh, yeah, Mickey tried a powerbomb. Um, Savannah Evans to the outside. I'll tell you what, I don't know, whatever she did, she ate the worst of that. And you know what? I am the table. I am the table. I am the table. Cuckoo, could you? Because that was a. Solid table, because that table did not break. And I don't think Sarah, uh, Savannah Evans landed all of it, and it looks like Mickey James took the worst of that. That could have been really ugly. Um, yeah, Mickey James and took the trash out. He's always in the ECW arena. Found the trash can full of stuff. Uh, Tasha. Oh, I'll tell you what, she grabbed Tasha. By her trunks to throw her back in the ring. Oh my goodness. Tasha's Tasha's bottoms are $75. And 50 of them. 50 of those dollars went right up where the sun don't shine. That was amazing. Thank you, Mickey James. Thank you. But yeah. Um, the shit that Mick DDT. Savannah Evans uh, got pulled out. <laughs> Hebner was yelling at Savannah Evans. <laughs> it looked like he was going to pop a vein. In his forehead. Then Chelsea Green supposed came out, but just sat there. Oh, are we going to see the turn? The only thing that would have made this match is if one of these ladies took a, took a cheese grater to, to, the, to the nether regions. Whoa. That's disturbing, even by my standards. But that's an ECW tradition. Cheese graters all over the place. Wait, yeah. There were no cheese graters. There was no blood. There was, they kept their outfits on all the time. The heck? Yeah, so eventually, um, Tasha Seals hit a, hits a big splash. I don't think it was a frog splash. He never kind of like, went, woo! He just kind of like jumped. Pinned Mickey James Street teams for belt. And then Chelsea Green clocks. Mickey James, she takes the cast off her wrist. Which is a bad idea, Chelsea Green. You've had wrist surgery twice. 
Don't be like Tegan Knox. She had three knees. She had, um, I think she damaged the, the, the same ACL like three or four times. And she's not here with us anymore. It's often Newcastle upon time. Like serving pints. That's not good. Yeah. Um, only because this match was built as a Philadelphia street fight. And I fear someone would get bloody. And especially with Mickey James, something would pop out. And there was no cheese grater use. And that one spot looked like it was rough. And the trash can, eh. You know what? This was a can of soup match. It had all the height, had, had all the sizzle, but none of the steak, though. So, yeah. So, that was Impact. For the most part, I mean, four out of five matches were cheeseburger matches. Right down the middle. They just need to realize if you're going to have a Philadelphia street fight, someone has to get busted open with a cheese grater. Yeah. So, that was Impact Wrestling. Um, that's the end of my week. Because I have a lot of stuff. Well, yeah, by the time this video gets up Friday, I won't be able to watch any. I haven't seen any WWE wrestling in a while. It's weird. Next week, however, I'll be doing a show. I think almost every day. Yeah, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Also for Thursday and Friday. I might see WrestleMania Day 1 on Saturday. I don't know. Oh, no. I'm going to. I'm going to Jacksonville that day. Who knows? Sunday. Who cares? Um, again, also next week. Yeah, probably do that. Thursday. I'll put up my predictions video. 